you take that into it? Yeah, Clinton. Um, through the chair, um, the connection through to Synagogue Place um, does connect that that laneway through. So, um, but clearly, um, it's quite a low speed, narrow environment. So we don't think people will, will be rat running through there. But obviously, given that it would be declared a public road, we'll be able to monitor and police that area. Um, we'll look. At that. Um, I, I hate calling people rat runners, but um, those lights can be. Quite, uh, quite trying at times. Um, is there anything we can do to ensure that doesn't happen? Like a, a sign that says, you know, you'll be murdered if you go down this lane, avoiding those traffic lights or something less precarious? Uh, through the chair, we're happy to monitor and police this as an needed council. Any other questions or discussion regarding this item 5.2? No? Okay, moving on. Uh, 5.3, uh, the City of Adelaide Water Infrastructure. It, this is a report that is to be noted, but uh, anyone like to discuss this item? Have any questions? Yes, Councillor Hyde. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for the report. The, um, uh, just looking at for Agreement SA Water, talks about the pressure issues experienced last season and that they, they will be resolved, but doesn't go into detail about what the issues were. What were the issues in the end? Good, Chair, thank you for the question. Um, the issues were more about flow and supply. Um, what we found through the investigation is that a lot of other entities are using the gap water, and looks like water using it at the same time as council would use, and therefore creating a bit of a flow issue. Um, we're going to have to increase the flow and supply and negotiate times of um, irrigation with those entities. Cool. So it's just coordination and how much water is actually in the system at any one time and who's going on it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is that part of the reason why I think it's said in here? And I wasn't clear whether it was gap water or not, but we're irrigating during the day mostly. Or yes. So if we chair again, um, we are irrigating through the day um, in some instances. Yeah, yeah. Does that do we know how much? Um, I don't really take an issue with it, but do we know how much uh, evaporation might be caused by doing that? Is it, is it inconsequential, or I guess it depends what season is? Or... Very much inconsequential. Where we do irrigation in the day, we'll try and um, put it through either earlier or later hours yeah. during the day. One, so we're not impacting uses of our plants, but two, so we don't get impacted by the evapotranspiration. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Anybody else? Councillor Moran? I know this is directly what we're talking about, but um, has anybody monitoring, monitoring you know, when we're nervous when we started to use the gap water that it's, that it's salty, <laughs> saltier than the uh, river and the uh, normal mains water? Are we monitoring um, the salt in the soil? Yes, through the chair, we, we receive SA water um, health reports on a monthly basis and they sort of break down the different compounds of the water. And there's an uh, and? And the results are through winter when we're not irrigating the yeah. salt levels are higher. Um, through summer when we're pumping more water through the system, the water's a bit oh, really? and less. So, so it's not going to kill all the modern bays in 50 years? No. Okay, no. thanks. Um, yeah, look, uh, I read the report, and the report makes uh, no mention of our using untreated water from the torrents of the purposes of watering the golf course. Is there a reason why we don't mention that? Uh, through the chair, I'm, I'm not sure we're happy to take that on those and investigate. Please work it in the video. Yeah, it says, uh, I have an internal document here that was passed to me, and it says that we used in one particular quarter 91 megalitres of Torrens water, um, which compares with 98 during the corresponding period last year. Um, can the administration confirm that is the majority of the water that is being used on the golf course? That is water pumped directly from, untreated water pumped directly from the torrents? Sorry, through the chair. Um, through the chair. Um, happy to take that on notice and provide some more information on that case. Sure. Can, uh, can I ask, are we concerned about the safety issues? Because, I mean, um, you, you wouldn't put your hand in the, uh, the torrents water at times of the year. It's quite toxic. 
I, I'm just wondering, uh, are we doing anything to safeguard, particularly people using the golf course, to ensure that they're not um, exposed to disease or uh, some um, other threat? Uh, thank you. So through the chair, um, we take our water quality testing seriously and obviously monitor that um, pretty um, ruthlessly at times when we know that the water quality isn't good. Um, Tom manages the golf course. Perhaps if you can just give Councillor Martin some assurance around how that process is managed, please. Thank you, CEO. Through you, presiding member. Uh, first of all, we've got permission to actually water you, our, use water from the River Torrance through the NRM board. Um, so it's actually in a controlled manner. Um, the only time that we cease where it is deemed to be inappropriate is when we get a blue green algae outbreak. Um, and we're not the only person who uses or entity who uses water from the Torrance. In regards to the safety of the water, we, we time, uh, like what Ross has indicated, our watering times where we have the least amount of public interaction with that water, and we haven't had any reported issues in regards to using Torrance water as irrigation. The majority of that water is used on our golf course, but in particular our northern golf course. Okay, uh, well the document I've got says that we use mostly GAP on the north course, but um, uh, I'm, I'm happy to stand corrected, although I wrote this, uh, I guess is happy to stand corrected. Um, uh, can I Sorry, have... Sorry, Councillor um, Martin, it's always really challenging for us when you start, <laughs> a, uh, start a conversation with, you've got access to an internal document that clearly the rest of us sitting around this table aren't privy to. So trying to help you understand uh, what's happening tonight is a bit challenging from my perspective. Just, uh, well, just no, this, this, is, this is a quarterly report that goes to directors. This is this is not something that's secret. It's a quarterly report. It just happened to be passed to me. But what I'm saying, Councillor Martin, is there's no one else around this table that's looking at the same information. So it just makes it a bit challenging for us all. Okay. All right. Well, look, I'm past. happy for you to provide the answers. Thank and you. could I could I also have some uh, guidance as to what we do in terms of warning users that the water uh, may not be safe? Water that is on the golf course may not be safe either for. So I just heard Mr. McCready clarify that it is safe, and if it's not safe, it's not used. Yeah, I mean, because of that, we use the potable water when there's a green algae outbreak, and I wouldn't have thought that you needed. Sorry, to Councillor Moran, can you please put your microphone on? I wouldn't have thought, thought you needed the internal report to know that. I know that. We switch to the mains water when there is, um, as you just said, clear. I mean, that's the simple answer to what Councillor um, asked for. I don't see the problem. Well, there isn't a problem, Councillor. Well, there wasn't a problem. I was just trying to help Councillor Martin and try and help the, um, my colleagues around me. But if we have a document that um, we can all look at, we're more likely to be able to well, give you an important The answer, answer is that we that changed our sprinklers, as Tom knows, yes. to, to allow no aerosol because of the potable water. Uh, Jesse, have you got some problem that I know the answer to this? I think, no, I I'm, think, I'm, I'm, I think, I'm, 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 I'm wondering why we're listening to councillors and not the... Yeah. Yeah. I think, can I... Can I please um, interrupt here? I think um, uh, I think the CEO said it rightly. If there is a document that you are reading this from, Councillor Martin, then maybe you should um, see the share. It oh, no, 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 it's already been shared. It's called the Golf Links Horticulture okay. Quarterly Course Report. And in reference to what point, to what question you want clarity on, um, so then it can come, they can, okay, well, they can get a direct repeat answer to I'm you. I'm happy to repeat it again. Yeah. To you. So I'm sure it's going to be given to you on notice, is that right? This question is on notice, is that right? Uh, we can clarify this to you in an email. I thought Tom had answered the question, but here it again. It's been answered. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, so well, have, not, in, not in respect of the signage and so uh, that's, that's the part that I'm talking about. Yeah. It doesn't need to be signed. Correct. Because through, through you, presiding member, just in response to Councillor Martin's uh, comment, is first of all the the water the water quality of the, cor uh, the Torrens 
um, is not dissimilar in certain times in regards to the water quality that we get from the gap, noting that the gap water is recycled or grey water. The Torrens water effectively we've been using for a multitude of years along the golf course and just to relay in regards to irrigation, the south course is fully irrigated using gap water. Um, however, we do not have a full uh, irrigation system in the northern course, which we're actually installing now. That is actually located through a pump house, which actually takes water from the torrent. But it is safe water. Um, Chair, look, I, I have a problem. I'd like it clarified because the internal document doesn't say that. It says that we use 91 megalitres of Torrens water on the south and par three course. It's not get water. Through you, uh, presiding member, uh, for, first of all, again, where possible, we can use Torrens water um, without going too much into Torrens water for council and the community's free water. It's water that would make its way down to the ocean. We are permitted to use that water. Um, where practical, we would then use uh, gap water. What we tend not to use, we uh, have removed that use, is potable water. That's why gap water was introduced, so that we actually don't use potable water. The water that we use from the torrents is safe, and the water that we use from gap is safe, and it's been uh, proven to us through the reports. Thank you. Okay, all good? We've got all that clarified. No other questions? No, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the next item. We've got item 5.4, planning and design code. Um, we have Michelle here. We had a workshop on this item. Um, this is a, a report that's uh, going into council. So if anyone has any questions or requires clarification in regards to this, anyone talk to that, Michelle? Uh, thank you, Deputy Law Mayor. Um, so I thought I might just do an introduction um, and we've got a few slides, um, just not specifically in relation to the report, but in relation to um, the Riverbank Code Amendment. Um, are you able to put that up, please, Kylie? Um, so we did send an e-news out um, late last week that we have received more information now from um, the Attorney General's Department in relation to the Riverbank Precinct Code Amendment. Um, and just because we, we do cover this in the report and it's a matter of, uh, I suppose, uh, it's important to move quickly um, on this. We wanted to give Council an opportunity um, to see the information. So, I'll wait entirely. I maybe might just talk talk you through what's proposed um, to be included. So the first thing we've got is a map that shows the area um, or the designated um, area from the Attorney General's department. That basically um, incorporates land predominantly on the southern side of the Kawara Parry or River Torrens, um, extending from the Adelaide Zoo it takes in um, the land um, just to the eastern side of Frame Road, including the um, New Botanic High. Uh, it also includes Lot 14, then extends all the way um, to the north of North Terrace, um, all the way to the river itself, and then it extends across onto the northern bank. Oh, here we go. So I'd have to explain in words. You can just look at the picture. Um, it also includes things like um, Pinky Flat um, and both sides of the River Torrens. You can see up here it's bounded by the red. And you can see um, important includes the hospital precinct um, and all the way to the um, western boundary of the parklands um, along Port Road there. So it's quite a substantial area. Um, Obviously, um, this is a, I would expect this to be of keen interest to Council. Um, the further information that we sent to you last week includes this map, but also some of the specific policy um, or intended policy. And if we could flick to the next one, just want to draw your attention to a number of things. So it actually does use the word rezone land. Um, in the affected area. We don't have the, you know, an understanding of what parcels would be rezoned for what purpose, 
but it does allude to the fact that we're talking about rezoning land to the west of the city riverbank zone, that health subzone, and this includes land that is currently within the Adelaide parklands as well, um, that isn't within that health subzone, nominating the Debitton Police Barracks and the old Adelaide Jail, which of course is on the State Heritage Register. Um, to accommodate health and biomedical related facilities and services. So at the moment in that area, we do have obviously the police barracks. Um, we have um, land that's under the care of the control of council that is actually used for the adjustment of the police graves um, as well, and then the old jail. And if you do follow that map, we're talking about all the way down to Port Road. Uh, it also talks about rezoning land to the northeast of the Royal um, Adelaide Hospital to accommodate entertainment um, land uses. If we slide over to the next um, one, please. Um, and then um, in terms of actually the policy content, it talks about um, improved policy to better reflect pedestrian connectivity through and into those precincts. Uh, including land adjacent to that affected area um, and particularly in relation to the new Women's and Children's Hospital and Riverbank Arena. So they're the two um, big developments that obviously have been announced as part of the state government's um, forward budget processes. Um, and then in addition to that, it talks about policy um, to ensure the built form interface of the entertainment precinct with the parklands achieves a high amenity and the North Terrace public realm is of high quality. Um, and you can see it specific called out the area in front of the Intercontinental Hotel down to North Terrace. So if you know that area, that's where you've got those um, art forms on the Asa Plaza there as well. We just flick over to the next one. Um, and then um, you can see it's referring to um, the uh, innovation subzone, which is lot 14, of course, where I think we worked fairly hard to get some really good outcomes um, out of that um, more recent um, rezoning, and it's talking about achieving the land use and built form outcomes of that master plan. So this is really high level, these, um, these statements, but it's giving us an indication of where the state government's likely to go with this. Um, and then of course, general, I guess, catch all um, in terms of reviewing policy within both the city riverbank zone and the Adelaide parkland zone within the affected area and making any consequential changes or refinements. So it could well, um, until we see the detail, we won't know, but that could well um, perhaps mean a rezoning of land um, that is currently open space within the Adelaide parkland zone, perhaps to um, enable, say, the car park associated with the new women's and children's hospital. Um, because you know that sort of built form is not currently envisaged in a parkland zone. So they're the types of things we're anticipating. Um, you know, we, we really haven't any insight in terms of what they're thinking about um, with the Botanic High adjacent to that and the zoo as well. So what we're planning to doing, because um, the timeline for this is very, very fast. Um, so if we flick to the next, yeah, thank you ahead of me there. So um, the last dot, dot, dot point up there says they're actually scheduling, you know, completion of gazettal of the changes for November 2021. That's very, very quick. Um, so the documentation that supports this um, initiation um, says that the one thing they've done um, is actually look at the um, car parking needs of the hospital. And that seems to be the really the only supporting analysis that has occurred to for this. So we're suggesting that we will write very quickly to the Attorney General as the Minister for Planning, seeking additional in investigations and early collaboration with the City of Adelaide um, immediately. And the reason we want to do this is we it's very difficult to wait for council processes and actually get in early to make sure that they're undertaking those types of investigations. Um, so the things that we would be talking about in, in relation to that are things like what is the impact on, on heritage values, whether that might be the state heritage listing of the old jail or the national heritage listing of the Adelaide um, Parklands plan, um, Parklands and city layout, um, the movement um, connections between that, um, those zones and, and into the parklands and back into the city as well, um, and you know, many, many other things as well. 
Um, we will obviously keep you updated through um, e-news and, and any other um, processes as well, of course, coming back into council um, as well. What we do know is that they will have to undertake community engagement um, processes in accordance with the Charter, and we're waiting to see what that would be in, in August and, and September. So um, that's, I guess, more than what the content of the report is um, in front of you, but ready for any questions either in relation to the report or anything else that we might know um, around the code amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for that, Michelle, any questions, any discussion in regards to this item? Councillor Martin? Uh, not, not to this uh, presentation, um, but to the presentation that's in our papers. Um, and I just wondered um, what is the, uh, the percentage of council's submissions to the PM, uh, the code uh, marked not implemented? As a, Sorry, uh, Councillor Martin, do you mind putting off the Sorry. You can take my mask off. Take my mask off. Oh, you don't have to. No, I'm probably going to lose it. You can leave your mask on if it's your choice. No, no, it's, uh, it's okay. Um, uh, what is the percentage of those which are not implemented? I, it looks to me. Uh, of all than 200, it's at least 50%. Would that be right? <laughs> Sorry? Um, through the chair, um, we haven't identified in the report the percentage in relation to items which you've identified in that attachment. The reason being is that that attachment only includes the items that were left outstanding really at the end of the process and doesn't include all of the items that have been resolved through through the process through previous submissions. So we thought by documenting a number on that wouldn't necessarily give an accurate reflection of the complete conversion of the development plan to the code. We could add them up, but just noting that it would be only a portion of the whole content of the previous development plan. So, so all of those issues that are listed here are not all of the issues, is that what you're saying? No, so that attachment was a review of the last submission council made on the code, and right. so obviously that last submission wouldn't have included items that were resolved through previous submissions. Okay, okay, well that makes sense, I understand that. And when we say further investigation required, what does that mean and when will that happen? Um, that will happen progressively over time. Um, and if you look at the work plan, there's a number of items identifiable. We may have opportunities to pick those up. Um, as, as part of this report, what we're suggesting is that there's some priority areas that we think we should focus on. Um, they would become our focus. These other items we'll continue to monitor and pick up as those opportunities. So all, all of those that are not implemented that have a further investigation required are priority ones, is that correct? Uh, not those, the four priorities in attachment B relate to the themes we've identified around sustainability, livability, uh, movement and heritage. Mm -hmm. The other items, some of those items might fall within those priority areas, some of them might fall without. If they fall outside, they'd be picked up in probably what I'd say some more of the administrative improvements and refinements to the code over time. Um, and if I just might make a quick comment, I, I, look, I really appreciate this document. This actually uh, catalogues for me um, what has been a complete failure of this overhaul. It is a bit of a debacle because we've, we've given up so much that the city fought for over hundreds of years uh, to get in terms of standards. Um, they are just not covered in the code. And so what we have is everything from uh, you know, access to buildings, uh, to height of access, to overshadowing, uh, blocking out people's solar systems, uh, to no standards on noise, um, to no standards that prevent, as they have done in the past, uh, adult entertainment services or adult entertainment shops in Melbourne Street or O'Connell Street, as we used to have. All of these things have gone. Um, in, in the document here, they're not, they're not covered to the satisfaction of the administration as I see it. And that's an appalling outcome and demonstrates uh, just what a failure uh, this was when it was implemented by the RAN 
with rural governments and as it's been adopted by the Marshall government. I'm bitterly disappointed, bitterly disappointed that it's come to this. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Hyde. Um, thank you, Chair, and thank you to the administration for uh, presenting such a detailed document. Um, uh, could, could I just be a little bit of a pain and ask for a, a fresh document and or spreadsheet to be circulated that removes all the no action required ones, just so for ease of um, digesting it, um, uh, just to see, because we're approving the work program, and I've been through it all, but by the time you start at one, you get to 240 something. Um, you've forgotten what the first part of the document was. Um, so if we just so I can get a little bit more of a condensed version um, before the council meeting uh, is is the first thing. Um, and just regarding this, has um, uh, but for but for the 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 work that was done before the code was finalised and implemented. Um, uh, have we have we spoken to our community or on the flip side of that industry and the, the, the sector as well about this and and tested what their thoughts are on it and if we have um have we captured that feedback in here and if we haven't is that something that perhaps we should do yeah. Yeah, there, there is since implementation, there's been a series of discussions. Um, I'd say in terms of learning how the code has been going to help inform us in terms of how people are using the code and the response to the code. Um, it's something that would be part of our work plan over time to continue to do to do that and to support I guess, all the users of the plan of the city. We don't um, say we have a document like of the feedback we've received to date to be able to provide you, um, but it's informing the work as we move forward. I, I suppose through you, Chair, what, um, what, what I'm sort of getting at, and, and look, I'll by and large defer to the experts because they, they deal with the, you know, the code and the previous plan and, and that sort of thing, and, and, and they know it best. I just, I'd be really interested to know what, um, what our stakeholders and our community's perspective is on it, and because ultimately that will also guide my judgment on what the priority areas of work should be. Um, obviously, a lot of issues have been identified here as well. I'm also wondering what issues haven't been identified necessarily by the administration, but um, and and I also appreciate that we won't see some of those issues come to fruition until decisions are being made on the code and things are being built and residents start seeing things happening that previously wouldn't have been allowed to happen and then we'll see those issues come to light. But um, I'd be really interested if we could do some due diligence on that beforehand to further inform our work. Um, that's not something you can answer tonight, but I'd be interested in taking that discussion offline um, and before the council um, meeting and fielding any ideas that uh, the administration or even colleagues have about how best to approach that. Thank you, colleagues. Um, Elected members, I'm, I'm, when someone's talking, can we have not have anyone else talking, please? Appreciate that. Just the strokes administration. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Yep, no, all good. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, item 6.1, exclusion of the public to consider in confidence. We take this uh, um, matter into confidence. Those uh, depending on I have a mover, please. Councillor Brimsday, Councillor Knowles, anyone? anyone like to speak to it? Councillor Martin. Um, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, look, uh, this item should not be heard in confidence. Um, it is about open space and places for uh, people. Um, it is about submissions. Uh, there's no commercial and confidence aspect to this. Um, it's not possible to justify confidentiality because it involves any state government decision. Um, this is a submission under discussion, as the title of the item says. And uh, it is my view that this council, uh, which the advertiser has reported is the most secretive in South Australia, 
This is the uh, the chamber of secrets, as the advertiser calls it. Um, it's it's my view that what is being proposed is being kept confidential because it could open us to ridicule. That is to say, if people knew what we were discussing and how we were discussing. Sorry, through the chair, that's not grounds for keeping something in confidence, Councillor Martin. Just to be clear, embarrassment and ridicule aren't grounds. So uh, I'm, I'm about to say that, chair. That. I'm, yeah. Oh, sorry. So just to be really clear, yeah. that's not ground. Yeah. I think uh, I think uh, at that point, um, Councillor Martin, um, I think you know you're treading into a no, 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 I'm where saying, you know I, I think appealing. administration worked very hard. No, 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 you can't tell me to stop. And I'm just saying that it's just be very mindful with your words. I am saying to you that it is my personal view, my opinion that there is, and I have said that repeatedly, it is, it is my view, it is my opinion that this is being kept in confidence because it is embarrassing. That, that is what I'm submitting and I'm saying... No, that's no, that's okay, thank so, you. So I have to reiterate yet again that that is not the reason why this item is in confidence. That is legally not a, an ability that I have, it's not within my powers, and so okay. therefore I would not, I would not do that. I understand it's your personal opinion, it's, and I'm, and I'm entitled to hold that. Well, I'm entitled are, to hold that. But I just well, you, need to you, make it absolutely clear for everybody. Well, that let me let embarrassment let me, and ridicule are not grounds to keep what, anything what are, in confidence. Then, I, the chair, I would be happy, um, rather than debating this with the CEO, I would be happy for you to ask the administration, what are the grounds? What are the grounds right that there. this is being held in confidence? It's right there in front of you, uh, Councillor. Uh, there is no commercial so, advantage. Um, just one moment, I will move on because I think Clinton, you, you I wanted to uh, discuss why this, please. Through the chair, the, the, um, the grounds are on, on the screen and the basis of confidentiality. I'll probably just add to that that um, the um, report talks to a competitive um, submission for grant funding. So we're in a competitive environment um, going up against other projects and other submissions and, and hence why at this point in time um, we're seeking confidentiality as the basis. Well look, I contend again Chair that we are in competition for grants money is not commercial in confidence. That is not the definition within the Act. I, I believe, Councillor Martin, that it has been explained to you that in their opinion, administration's opinion, that this item needs to remain in confidence for those reasons that was given to you. Your personal opinion is your personal opinion and you have voiced that. Thank you. Lord Mayor, did you have something that you wanted to say? I was just mainly going to talk to the uh, the fact that we're a capital city and therefore we do have a number of um, items that have to be held in confidence because we deal with contracts over and above what any other council would deal with, particularly commercial and confidence contracts uh, around the developments that we're beginning. So I actually thought the number in the TISA was actually a very good number compared with previous years. And I know there's been an enormous effort to try and keep as much out of confidence as possible for public interest and to lift the confidentiality as soon as we are able. Um, again, I support this one tonight because I know these are tricky negotiations. They are with funding partners and we're, we uh, have to work through this. Oh, this, this uh, that, 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 that's, that's my opinion. Thank you, Chair. I, I, it's not a conversation, I'm just voting for it. Does anyone else want to give their personal opinion? Councillor Hyde. <laughs> <laughs> Professional opinion. Um, <laughs> um, look, I, I, I take the councillors' points. Um, uh, they're, they're, they, they are fair points. Um, however, for me, it comes down to public interest. Um, and if us, if us considering there, yeah, but the, and, and if I can finish, the, the point is we are putting submissions into a competitive grant process. Um, other councils are doing this exact same thing, or buying for one pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And if, order, if in order to get to the end of the rainbow, um, uh, we consider this aspect of it in confidence, knowing that anything that is successful, people will know about, uh, not least of all because it will get built. Um, uh, if considering this in confidence assists us in having successful applications to this uh, grant program, I would say that's actually in the public interest. 
it's in the interest of the city of Adelaide ratepayers because they would much rather us uh, get the process right and achieve uh, grant funding awarded to us for their benefit than uh, than otherwise. That's the base. And I was actually, when the council started talking, I was very tempted to vote against this. Um, but I went through it, I thought about it, and that's that's the perspective that I've landed on. It is in, it is in our ratepayers' interest currently for us to consider this um, in confidence um, uh, in the hopes that our uh, grant submissions um, will be successful. That's absolutely in their interest. And if, if doing it in confidence can assist them in being successful, and then assist the city and the ratepayers if those projects are realised. Then that's that's a that's a very that's a very that is a very good reason to go into conference. Okay. All right. So we will take this to a vote. Those in favour? Those against? Motion is carried. Division. Thank you. A div can you call a division? No. 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 I don't think you can. No. No, I've been told by governments, not my personal view. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, that's not, we, we are often yeah. called divisions. No. Um, no, sorry, through the chair, not in committee meetings, in in council meetings, but not in committee special, meetings. Yeah. So those that are not associated with this item, can you please... Um, We'll also close the meeting. Have a lovely evening.